Today, we are going to be taking a look at my childhood Game Boy, the first Game Boy that I ever owned. This right here is the Game Boy Advance. Now, I didn't have the gold one, which is what this one is. I had a platinum silver, which was apparently a limited edition. And so is this one. This gold one was not a common color. Not even sure it was released in the UK, although that might not be right. Um, but I got this one from Japan. I paid a grand total of $11.80 with $5.99 postage, but um, it was actually a little bit cheaper than that because I ordered a bunch of Game Boys at the time. So here we go, if I can show you the listing right here, it says $11.80, $5.99 um, shipping. So it says not working Game Boy Advance, and then you go in the description and it says, the item does not work, we've checked this item and it just couldn't power on. We were unable to confirm the details. The pictures show all of the actual items that you'll receive, blah, 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 blah. So that's about all I need to hear. Apparently it doesn't work. I'm gonna be doing this video slightly differently. It's gonna be a lot more raw. A lot of you guys have been asking for more raw videos, a little bit like My Mate Vince. In fact, they specifically asked for My Mate Vince videos. This will be a full restoration. I've got a can of paint here. Um, the last time I painted a Game Boy, I got a load of stick for not doing it properly. So we've got some different tools today to be doing it a little bit differently. Let's crack on and see what is wrong with the Game Boy. Definitely in need of a clean. Uh, besides that, there's a little bit of dirt in the A and B buttons. I'm not sure you're gonna be able to pick that up, so we're definitely gonna need to give that a clean. The Nintendo logo doesn't have any dirt in it, which is nice, but obviously we're gonna be doing a massive cleaning job to this before we paint it anyway. In terms of corrosion, it doesn't appear that there is any, which uh, is quite relieving. That means that the power issue, as with most of the Game Boy Advance power issues, is probably gonna be to do with the power switch. The only other thing which is somewhat disappointing is the screen is very badly scratched and there's not going to be a terrific amount that I can do about that in today's video because I don't have any plastic polishes. Let's try and turn it on. Here we go. Absolutely nothing. Let's try that again. Oh, there we go. It's definitely working. working every time now. So yeah, as I mentioned, usually just a little bit of a power switch issue. It is a little bit finicky, there you go, it's actually turned itself off a little bit there. I think it's fair to say we're gonna need to give that power switch a resolder and a bunch of cleaning with IPA, but we shall start by taking it apart. So, taking apart the Game Boy. So it's, I don't know, I find these videos a little bit more boring. I'm not sure how this video is going to be received, but I'll be interested to know. So let me know. I know that Vince puts classical music on his videos and then speeds them up, but I don't think I can pull that off. <laughs> so it is six triwing screws, and then there is a little Phillips screw in there, which we shall take out with a Phillips screwdriver bit. Uh, these screws are going to need a clean. They're very oxidized. And then you can just pull off the back like that. Lovely. Take the screws out, put those to the side. So we've got one piece here. Um, I'm gonna now remove the RF cartridge shield as well, just to um, get that out of the way. Now painting this is gonna be interesting because I've only got a rattle can, although I've Got quite a lot of experience with a rattle can, so I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to make it look rather good, but we'll have to uh, basically just give it a go and see what you think. But regardless, I'm probably gonna be really, really happy with it, but the painting purists out there are probably gonna kick off at me and say, oh, well, that's not very good at all. Getting this little um, battery contact out is relatively easy. You just have to uh, get your screwdriver underneath the gap and then get a little flathead screwdriver and then just push this clip down because that clip holds on uh, inside this little hole here. So you just have to push that down and slide it out. So there we go, we've got two pieces of plastic, fresh and ready to be Brillo padded, if that's the right word. Apparently that's a professional 
thing that professionals use to um, clean dishes, painters use to prepare a surface to paint. So now what we can do is remove these. Uh, all of this stuff is gonna go in some hot soapy water and give that all a nice clean. So we'll put that up here. Um, I'll do some of that on camera, but again, I'm gonna have to make some sort of montage part in this video. I'm not gonna be able to do it all without it. Power switch, remove that as well. Just pop that to the sides. Phillips screw, there should be one here, one here, and another one. Uh, usually there is another one, but it doesn't look like there is. Maybe this has been opened before. Okay, remove those two screws. The next thing we're gonna do is unhook the ribbon cable, which is very simple. There's two black tabs either side of the ribbon cable. Go ahead and get your nail underneath there and just pull them up like so. And then you can lift out the motherboard. Whenever I talk like that, I feel like I'm Gordon Ramsay. Take hold of the chicken breast. Once you've got the motherboard out, we can actually set that to the side and we'll take a look at that whilst the paint is drying and give that all a nice clean and everything. Um, and now we can just take out the buttons and stuff. As I mentioned, all of this stuff is gonna be going straight into the sink in some really hot, soapy, antibacterial water because, I mean, look at the state of that. It's pretty nasty, I'm not gonna lie. So we'll set all of that to the sides. And last but not least, the screen. You can be a little bit more rough and ready on this than you can with Game Boy screens from Game Boy Pocket. Just twist the shell and the um, adhesive strip will give way underneath. With the Game Boy Pocket screens, you can damage them quite a lot by doing that a bit too aggressively. But with the Game Boy Color and uh, Game Boy Advance, the screens are a lot more uh, rugged. So there we go, we've removed the screen. As we saw, the screen worked absolutely perfectly. You could do a um, a modification to this and put a new IPS display in there. I will be doing that down the line to a different Game Boy, um, but I'm gonna keep this one original. Remove the adhesive strip, don't break that. We're gonna need to uh, reuse that again at the end, so just be very gentle. It's sort of like a foam, so if you put on it too much, it will break. That is everything. I'm now gonna go and run this stuff down to the sink downstairs and uh, remove the lens and the sticker with some hot water. And then we're gonna give this a try. In fact, I sort of wanna give it a try now to see if this is actually gonna do anything at all. So let's have a look. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that has definitely worked. Yeah, that is definitely, definitely worked. I don't know if you can see that, but it's just given it like a, you can see the, the marks from the Brillo pad, but because it's so fine, and you can see that the gold has actually come off there, because it's so fine, that's super smooth. That is brilliant. So we're gonna need to do that a lot to all of this, but um, what I shall do first is give it a nice clean, get a toothbrush in there, and just make sure that all of the, uh, the dirt has come out from either side, because it's pretty, grotty and then we'll remove the paint put a coat of primer on it and just get painting right let's go ahead and do that So I have managed to clean up the shell. It looks pretty decent. I am gonna to need to do a little bit more um, sort of by hand with a bit of Mr. Sheen and this microfiber cloth. But for the most part, with the toothbrush, I was able to get into the, you know, the sort of crevices down the side and remove all of the dirt. Um, I need to take off the sticker residue because one of the things that happened in my first re restoration that I uh, spray painted the Game Boy is I left a little bit of sticker residue on there and spray painted over the top. And my God, did I get a lot of uh, backlash for that? So let's not do that again. So what we're gonna do is just go ahead and scrub it. I'm not gonna you know, keep the whole thing in because it'll probably take some time, but let's just crack on with it. Right, well that, is about sort of 10 minutes of roughing up the, uh, the surface. 
and it's almost no longer gold now, which is really, really cool. And it's exactly the same on the back here. I think what I'm probably gonna do is not put a lot of um, primer on. I think I'm just gonna probably do, you know, one or two thin layers of primer now, uh, because this is actually almost gonna act as a bit of a primer coat itself. So really happy with that overall. Um, what I'm gonna go and do is wash the rest of the shell, make sure we get all of the, uh, the dirt and debris off before we then go ahead and start painting it. And then we'll just crack on with the painting process. So what we're gonna do is take a hairbrush, a makeup brush, very fine brush, and just dust off all of the, uh, the dust, just to get off the, um, the sort of the bigger chunks of it, because these things can get really dusty. You know, there's holes all over the thing, um, you know, especially by the cartridge slot and then the battery port, and my desk is just getting covered in bits of uh, dust. So that is obviously what we want. So that's pretty good. What we'll do is zoom the camera in and we'll take a look at the power switch. Okay, so with the power switch, we've got a bunch of different legs at the bottom here and then two on the side, just keeping the um, grounding shield down. So we're just gonna go over that, but before we do that, I'm gonna take a little bit of flux and just put that down there. You don't need a lot of it because it literally evaporates off in a matter of seconds as soon as that soldering iron touches. Um, but we are only gonna touch these little joints for a split second it's not going to um not going to require a lot of heat especially with the flux on there as well um, i'm just going to give it my best shot to get this on film here we go pretty happy with that i think that's probably going to be sufficient it's probably not gonna need a massive amount of uh, work. As you can see before, when I showed you, it was actually turning on. Um, it just wasn't doing it, you know, a lot. So take a little bit of um, isopropyl alcohol and just clean off the remaining flux and the bits that would have sort of spit around in that area. Okay, and then just for safe measure, we're gonna go over the whole board with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on a electric ultrasonic toothbrush. Again, that was recommended by you guys. This is a Zalmi toothbrush, I think. Um, it's just a, an ultrasonic toothbrush. So I'll leave a link to all of this stuff in the description below as well. You can also get down the, um, you know, the cartridge slot as well, just to make sure that when we put our cartridges in, we've got a really good connection in there. And that's pretty much all we're gonna to need to do with the ultrasonic toothbrush. What we're gonna do now is take some Q-tips and go over the button contacts. By giving that a clean, you're basically setting yourself up for really responsive button presses and stuff. So just a little bit of isopropyl alcohol again on a Q-tip, cotton bud, wherever you are in the world, and then just give it a rub like that and then it will just clean up the layer of oxidation over the contacts. Again, go over the, uh, the start and select. Look at that, you can see that there. That's exactly what I'm talking about. That just came off of the, uh, the start and select. So that is proof that it is working. Okay, and then you can also give the speaker a clean as well. Any dirt and debris on there is actually gonna lower the volume of the speaker, just because there's an additional weight on that plastic piece. And that looks like a very clean motherboard. I'm gonna drip some isopropyl down here in the um, connector for linking, and then I'm gonna get my toothbrush and just go in there as well and scrub that clean. So then the other thing I'm gonna do is just drip some IPA down the power switch as well, just to make sure that it's really nice and clean in there. It's running off of um, 
a metal contact sliding on another metal contact. So inevitably that is also going to sort of oxidize and then you just move the power switch around and that will clean it all up. And this Game Boy will turn on every time. That is another metal contact brushing up against another metal contact as well. So make sure that that is nice and clean. What we're gonna do as well, just to be super, super anal, is I'm gonna take off the caps of the L&R buttons, which is just a little bit of rubber. We're gonna drip some IPA down there, um, give it a little sort of stir around with the tweezers and then put it back on. And that will just ensure that we're getting good button presses on the L and R triggers as well. Now this would be nearly impossible to do if you didn't have a pair of tweezers, so don't even attempt it, but just grab the rubber and sort of squeeze it and lift out the black piece. And it will come out, there we go, although it just flew somewhere. Where did that go? Okay, I found it. Little bit of a nightmare, don't lose those. And then we're just gonna squeeze the Q-tip down there and then the exact same on the other side as well. Really make sure that you're getting loads of it in there. And then with just any sort of thin object, you might be able to just use your tweezers if you've got thin enough ones. Just give the button a press. And then on the same on the other side. There's one. And there's the second one. Perfect. That is a clean Game Boy. That is ready to be used. Happy days. So I just got the buttons back from the sink. I scrubbed them in some hot water uh, with a bit of soap as well, obviously, and then a toothbrush. So I'm gonna need to go over them a little bit more because some of them are actually still quite rank, like the R button here, the trigger button, um, it's just a little bit darker than I want, than the original sort of plastic should be. Um, let's just have a go at cleaning it first with a little bit of Mr. Sheen. Yeah, that is actually going to be absolutely fine. Brilliant. Look at those. They look absolutely brand new now. Bloody brilliant. Very happy with how that's turned out. It is now time to reassemble this Game Boy. I'm super excited, as I'm sure you can probably tell. The shell looks fantastic. It really has come out looking like it's fresh off of the, uh, the factory line. Um, I've decided I'm not gonna clear coat it, and that is gonna upset some people, but you get a far more authentic finish not clear coating it. And to be honest with you, look, I am gonna be fully aware that this thing is spray painted, so I'm gonna be very careful not to, um, to damage it, but it's a tough paint, you know, it's not just gonna rub off. The Game Boy Pocket, the gold one that I did a couple years ago now, that is still perfectly fine. We can just pop all of those back in now. Start and select. The Game Boy Advances are pretty, um, they're a pretty good place to start if you're looking to do uh, and get into sort of Game Boy repairs and whatnot. Don't forget your little uh, light tunnel tube piece, otherwise uh, it will not light up the same and it will definitely be incomplete. So now what we're going to do is take the adhesive strip and put that back down inside. Give the uh, screen a little wipe as well, just give it a little clean with a microfiber cloth, make sure that all of the... Uh, Dirt is off there. We will still have another chance to clean it though um, because we're not going to put the lens down until the very last step. So we can just place that down inside. We're going to drop the motherboard in. Make sure that the speaker goes in there properly. And once the uh, motherboard is in, go ahead and reconnect the ribbon cable. Take your screwdriver and put the two Phillips screws back in where they were before. So I've got one just underneath the two um, surface mount components here on the right hand side. Although I'm pretty certain there should also be another one that goes somewhere else, but I, I can't remember where it was. So I removed the little metal springs in the trigger buttons when I went to clean them. So you're gonna need to just press those back in. And then you can just slide the trigger buttons back in. Right, now we need to focus our attention on the back half of the Game Boy. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is put the button contact back in. To do that, you need to press the little spring out again so that when you push it in, the spring will catch onto that piece of plastic. Slide that in. 
and then you'll hear a very satisfying click. So now we can just drop that back in there, like that. Very excited to just turn it around and see what it looks like. Drop the, uh, the back shell piece back on. Make sure everything is nicely in there. So pop that Phillips screw back in there. Don't do the screws up too tight. That is a really easy way to um, sort of crack the shell. So we'll pop some batteries in it um, and just make sure that it actually all turns on. Here we go. Pop the battery cover on, flip it around and wow. That is looking so sick. First time, everything's all right with the speaker as well. That's good. Let's test the cartridge slot as well. And it's immediately read that game there as well. Fantastic, okay. This is all looking very good so far. So what we're gonna do now is take some of this 3M adhesive. This is just a 3M adhesive pad. Um, I just got that from a, another screen lens replacement that I had. I'm gonna turn this off now. And what we're gonna do is cut out some strips to stick on the back of these um, stickers. So now we're gonna stick the sticker down onto the back of this double-sided tape. This has a serial number that is specific to this Game Boy, so we sort of wanna keep that um, authentic. All right, that's not too bad. I'm gonna just need to cut off a tiny, tiny, thin strip on the top. Look at that. 3M double-sided tape on the back of a old, second-hand used sticker. Very good stuff. Okay, now we need to do the same to this, although for this, I'm just gonna cut out a few sort of thin strips and then we'll stick that on because I'm not gonna be able to get that whole shape. It's just gonna be way too complicated. So that is the adhesive stuck on the back of the sticker and the lens. We'll go ahead and peel the back of that off and then stick it down on the Game Boy. Moment of truth, here we go. Make sure the camera is recording. Yep, set that down in there like that. Yeah, it's a shame I couldn't get one which didn't have any scratches on the lens, but you know what? I'm not too worried about it. The Game Boy Advance uh, logo is gold and that's the most important part of it. Finishing touches is the Game Boy sticker to go on the back. Hell yeah. That went on perfectly. Wow, I think, you know what, those two things give it its character again. Those stickers that are slightly damaged, uh, but with the, the official authentic serial number and the lens that has a little bit of scratches on it. That is actually going to conclude this video. I'm very pleased with the result. I think it's come out looking really, really nice. And I don't have many unmodded consoles, so it's quite nice to have, uh, you know, some that aren't modded because they are still very beautiful and you get that proper nostalgia kick when it is, um, you know, official. What an absolute banger of a video. I'm really pleased with the result, as I said. It's not perfect. You know, there are some scratches and dings in it. Um, and unfortunately, as obviously, because when I paint it, it's gonna fill up those dings in the crevices. That is something which is unnatural. If you're gonna see a dent, a dent and a ding in something underneath, it's not gonna have the original same finish. But look, I'm pretty pleased with how this has come out. I think. You know, the dings do suck. If I was to have been really, really clever, I probably could have filled them up and then sanded them down or something, but I don't know how to do that. Um, I think what I've done has come out looking brilliant. Um, I've kept it original because I kept the battery cover on when I painted it, so underneath, You've got the original plastic color, which I think is really cool. The sticker has the official serial number on there. The back of it, to be honest, just looks you know, absolutely insane. If I was to get a replacement front, this thing would just finish off even better. The front of it does a little bit let down the whole thing because of how damaged that lens is. But I think I probably could find a replacement gold lens and stick that on there and then it would just finish up the whole thing so nicely. There's some really deep dents and groove and like 
gouges in this screen lens you can definitely see up there so even if i was to polish this it wouldn't be perfect but overall it's absolutely stunning and i love that gold color it's a a real beautiful color for the game boy hopefully you've enjoyed this slightly more uh, longer style of video it is really long so i'd be surprised if you actually made it this far if you did put a little wink face in the comments and only only us two will know um what that means. The games work absolutely perfectly. Not sure I can use the trigger buttons yet in this specific part of the game, but everything is very responsive and uh, that's down to the isopropyl alcohol and the thorough cleaning that we did. This thing is brilliant and it sounds fantastic as well. The speaker is obviously in really good condition. That is gonna wrap up this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed. As I mentioned, if you made it this far, leave a little wink face in the comments and I'll try and heart all of the ones that I see. I hope you guys have enjoyed this longer style of video. If you did, leave a like. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.